let's talk about how to keep API response consistent across the application. For that, we'll be using a third party package. So let's pull in the package. Now let's move on to our controller. So there will be two cases in case of an API response. First will be a successful case and second will be an error case. Let's talk about successful case first. Let's declare a function respond which will handle our successful case. Now this function expects two parameters. First will be data and second one will be message here we'll be using our third party package that we just pulled in return response builder as success and we need to pass the data here and then we'll be passing a message here and finally pin but what if I don't want to send in a message? For that, we will make it an optional parameter. As you can see in this function as well, message is an optional parameter. Now let's talk about error case. For that, we will declare a function respond with error. and we'll return response builder as error now this function expects a parameter api code so api code is nothing but some custom codes used to represent a specific error so api so let's just write api code then we have to pass in http status code as well http code and finally build okay let's talk about few other things here so first of all uh, what if in case of success i just want to send in a message in response and nothing in data for that let's just declare a function respond with message where message will be an mandatory parameter and we can remove the data function from here now in most of the cases you will be using a limited number of http status code so why not we declare some of the functions here so as to make it easier to call them whenever we need them respond bad request and we'll be using our function here that we just declared it expects api code and we'll be passing 400 as http status code which is basically used to represent a bad request okay let's do this for two more functions first one will be respond unauthenticated second respond not found 404 so we are almost done here in fact if you have seen our previous video we were already working on a laravel start project in which we made some authentication apis so why not 
use these functions there there will be a link in the description for you to watch them let's first look into this login api now we don't need to do this we can just do respond unauthenticated now it expects an api code so how can we pass an api code here for that let's declare a new class here api code dot php for keeping our api codes namespace app class api code public constant so we can just write invalid credentials you can keep it anything now let's go back here and just use our constant invalid credentials now for writing this message we'll be using a configuration file and localization feature as well so let's declare a configuration file response builder dot php now the third party package that we were using has its own configuration file laravel api response builder slash config response builder let's just copy this whole file and paste it here now you don't need to worry about all these configurations for now we'll be using two things here so the main code defines the minimum value of code that it can use for an api code and similarly max underscore is for maximum value now we'll be using this mapping here for defining our message so let's define it here api dot invalid credentials so now we'll be writing these messages for english language you can write them for other languages as well and that's the advantage of using localization feature of laravel Return invalid credentials, invalid email or password, and that's it. Let's try this out in Postman. So, here that was the previous response that we were getting in case of invalid email or password. Now, let's see the new response. Here, as you can see, your new message and it will here as well. Now, let's do this for other APIs as well. Now, in case of success, we can just use our function respond and pass in the data. Similarly, we can just use respond with message here again we'll be using our respond function so let's try our apis 
let's fetch in our token As you can see, the new response is consistent in case of success as well as error message. Now we can use these functions in our controller and can expect a consistent response in all our APIs. But what if an exception occurs and you want to return some custom modified response that should be consistent with your structure that you're using so let's talk about that in our next video till then bye bye